Hey everyone, Sarah Grace back with you and today I am making just a long awaited video that you guys have been asking for for a while and that is just what I wish I would have known going into the whole dietetics program, dietetic internship process and everything that you should know going into it because I feel like I was blindsided by a lot of things and so I'm just going to be real with you guys. I'm going to be honest. It is a great major and a great process, but there's a lot of things that you have to know going into it. So let's just get started. So I'm not going to lie in the sense that um, senior year dietetics had me like, <sighs> seriously though. <laughs> um, senior year dietetics was, the worst year probably of all of my undergraduate. So let's just start with what you should know before even getting into the dietetics undergraduate program. So there are three things that before you even get started you should know. Number one is just that classes are tough. <laughs> it's basically like any pre-med major, any science major, so you have to be all in. Like you have to be so set on wanting to become a registered dietitian or it is not going to be worth it for you and you probably won't make it through. <laughs> not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but just saying be passionate about it and be really into it or don't be in it at all. Number two is just the fact that you might be disappointed in the beginning in the sense that most of your classes you take are not going to be about dietetics or even about a lot of about nutrition. Um, a lot of the classes are just science-based gen ed classes like chemistry, biology, organic chemistry, biochemistry, microbiology, things like that you're gonna just be like, oh my goodness, Like as a dietitian, I'm never gonna use this again in my life. But welcome to college, welcome to most majors. So that is number two that you should know. And number three is just that at the end of undergraduate, you apply to dietetic internship programs that are one year to two years in length. If you don't get matched, you really don't have any other option. Like you must do the dietetic internship to become a registered dietitian and it's kind of hard to get matched. So if you don't get matched, you really have no hope until next year when you can apply again. So those are three things that I don't wanna like be like, ah, like you shouldn't be a registered dietitian, but just know these things in advance. So now that you've chosen, yes, it's for me. Yes, I'm passionate about it. I understand everything. What are things that you should be doing during undergraduate? And that is be well-rounded. Like yes, GPA matters a lot when you're applying to places and applying to internships, but it goes way past that because anyone if they try hard enough can get good grades. But you have to have something that makes you special. What makes you stand out? Find something that you're passionate about. Like for me, I was president of Junior Panhellenic with my sorority. I created a culinary club on campus called um, Culinary Arts Student Union. I have this whole like freshman healthy blog thing and everything. And like not saying you have to have anything crazy like oh my gosh, one in one in a thousand kind of things, but just have something like be more than just your grades. Get involved in something that you're really passionate about and get so involved that it's not just like, oh, I attended these meetings, like be really involved. So going along with being well-rounded, you need a lot of volunteering experience. For me, and like not just in one area, like for me, I'm not interested in being a clinical dietitian, but I still volunteered an entire summer of my time to Shands Hospital in Gainesville where I was at just to get experience. And then I also was volunteering under sports dietitians at the sports nutrition's office with all the UF athletes. And so I had both of those things to put on my resume and like you just, they really look at volunteering experience and the experience you've gotten. So that is your next tip. Let's get to just the whole application process and the mutual selection process because this was super confusing for me and I did not understand it till basically about to submit my application and I want you guys to know that beforehand. The mutual selection process, if you guys have been in a sorority then it's very familiar to you. You mark your top three to five schools and only submit applications to them, not to everyone, just to them. 
and then they also, every school makes their list of who their top candidates are. And then the computer system matches you guys up. So either a school that you want wants you and you get matched, or you don't get matched at all. There's no like, oh, I got in here, here, and here, where do I wanna go now? It's all about getting matched or not. Like, I got matched to Florida State University and I could either accept or turn it down and not get matched anywhere. So that is how it works. <laughs> and you have to, have to, have to be very strategic. Yes, your top, the first school that you apply to, number one, can be a dream school, can be like the far-fetched, like I would love to go here, but I know it's really hard. And then after that, be smart. You do not want to not get matched. So be smart, apply to schools, second, third, and fourth, if you do a fourth, where you know you have a really good chance of getting in because you want to get matched and that is the main goal. Like the main goal, yes, you would love to get matched somewhere that you love, 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 but you also just want to get matched. So be aware of where you stand among most of the people you're competing against and apply to schools that you think that you'll get matched at. So when you're looking at schools and trying to decide which one's for me, Number one, you have to decide, do I just want a dietetic internship, which is just one year, or do I want like a two-year program that's a combined master's and dietetic internship? Some of them are only like 16 months and they're both, but most of them are two years if you do a master's as well. That is what I'm doing, but I also applied to schools that were just internships. Other than Florida State, because I love Florida State, I love that they specialize in sports nutrition, so I applied to them even though I didn't know if I wanted to get a master's. Every other school I applied to, the other two, were only internships because I was like, I don't want to master, I don't want to get a master's in something that isn't what I'm interested in. So, first decide, do you want a master's? Do you not? Then look at what their emphasis is in. Most schools emphasize in clinical or community or something like that. If that's what you're interested in, if you want to work in a hospital, awesome. But for me, I didn't want to do that, and so it really impacted my decision when I saw that Florida State specialized in sports nutrition and that I was going to get to get a master's in sports nutrition. Like, I thought that was the coolest thing ever. So make sure you like are looking at their emphasis. Of course, like just because you do one that emphasizes in clinical thing, it doesn't mean you have to do something clinical afterwards because no matter what program you do, you have to do 12 weeks of clinical. Like I still have to spend 12 weeks of internships in a clinical rotation, even if even though like mine doesn't specialize in clinical. So it doesn't really impact that that much, but also like just look at the emphasis because that can really help you decide which schools you want to go to as well. And then also just look at location. Like where do you want to spend a year or two of your life? For me, like I applied to a school in Nashville too because I was like, ooh, Nashville, that's a cool city. <laughs> so look at the location too because you also don't want to be living in a city for a year or two of your life that you absolutely hate. When you choose the schools that you are like interested in, make visits. Even if they don't have like an official visit where you where they like have people come and say hi and meet them and talk about their program, make a visit. Like contact the director of the program and say, "Hi, I'm really interested. I'd love to meet you. I'd love to hear more about the program and make the trip up." Like I made the trip to Nashville just to see the program and like meet the director of the program. And it helps you so much when they put a face to your name. Like don't let you just be another application that they receive because that's gonna be really hard for them to know that you're like a standout and that they want you. Make sure that you contact the director and that you are just showing your interest and getting to meet them face to face if you can. So now let's get to the application process. The application process is probably the worst thing ever. <laughs> um, start early, don't wait till the last minute to begin your application. And on top of like senior year is probably the worst with dietetics, the classes are just extremely hard. I would have classes from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. with no breaks. And that is not typical of any other senior schedule. Like all my friends had zero class and I had to go to class all day. So just be prepared for that. But. In the process of all these classes, you're going to have to fill out an online application where every school you apply to will get this application. 
So I have like five to six main tips for this application process. Number one is include any and everything that has to do with nutrition and dietetics. Anything that you've done in the past that qualifies you to be a dietitian, that gives, gave you experience in the nutrition field, anything, or just like anything that gave you leadership experience or just shows qualities and your strengths, include it in the application. Include everything. A big part of the application process is your personal statement. Think about college essay, but for a dietetic internship application. And so this personal statement should definitely include all your strengths and all about all of your volunteering experiences and shadowing experiences, but you should do it in a unique way. Like for me, I started out like with just the whole fact that I resigned as a student athlete and I thought I was giving up a great opportunity by doing that but I followed my heart and then it led to Fresh Fin Healthy and everything else and it gave me opportunities to work with nutrition companies and it gave me opportunities to invest my time in other places like the volunteering and everything. So just make sure like they are reading thousands of personal statements, make your special, make it unique, make it you. Going along with that, make each personal statement for each school you're applying to different. For me, I applied to three different schools and that's usually what they suggest. After that, your chances go down very low. So for me, all three schools, you can upload a different personal statement for. And I would basically use the same personal statement, but then change it to be like, I really wanna to go to Florida State University because, and make it special to their school. Like they specialize in sports nutrition. So I said like, I've always been an athlete. I love sports dietetics. That's what I wanna pursue in my future, that kind of thing. And then just make, and then like at the end, if you are putting the school first, make sure you let them know that in the personal statement. Like at the end, be like, this is why I'm putting Florida State University first, because you want them to know that you are putting them first so that you have a higher chance of them putting you on their top list. Number three is be smart and advance with letters of rec. You need at least three to four strong letters of rec, and you need to make sure that you are forming strong bonds with professors and with the people you volunteer with so that you can get these letters of rec. Like for me, it's hard when you go to a huge university where your classes are 400 plus kids and you never get to know your professor. Make sure to at least get to know three to four people throughout your undergraduate and get to know them really well so that they know that they can write a strong letter of rec for you. Like letters of rec are so important and especially one of them most likely is gonna to have to come from the director of your program. So make sure that you are just forming a bond with them, going to your, their office hours, making them see that you really want this and that you really like everything that they're doing and that you are just passionate about this and that you are willing to go the extra mile. So just let them know that you care. Like go to office hours to professors, get to know them, let them get to know you. When you have like classes of 300 plus kids, don't let that like stop you. Like just make sure you go and spend the extra time getting to know them. The next tip is just that when you find a gem, like when you're looking through schools and like, which one should I apply to? If you find one that's really cool and really good, keep it to yourself. Like we had 30 kids in our program applying to applications and as much as some of them are, are your friends, you all are, all are competing for similar spots. So be careful, don't open your mouth. Um, I mean, this program right here said that they only would take one person from UF at most, and they only accepted like 12 people. So there's like over 100 people that apply, they only take 12, and they only said that they were gonna take one from UF. Thankfully, they took me and my friend, but both of us really wanted this program, and it's just hard like when you find a program you like watch out like don't tell everyone about it because then everyone's like oh that is a cool program i'm gonna apply i'm gonna apply i'm gonna apply and like they don't accept that many people one school for our program got really popular among the 30 of us not me but most of them and like half the program applied to it and like not everyone's gonna get in so just be careful find schools that you like you can talk to like a couple people, but just be careful with who you talk to it about. Lastly is 
if like find out if your director has special connections somewhere like my director had special connections at certain schools not at the school I'm at but she did know a lot of people out there because of being in the dietitian world for a while and she helped people get in so just be aware that that can help you and talk to her and talk to her if like she knows of good programs to apply to if she knows of people that you know that you'll be happy with just talk to your director get to know her like always and just see if there's any connections that she has at schools that you're interested in because that can really help you too And then this is where the annoying part, kind of frustrating, kind of ah part comes in. You apply to your top three to four schools and then you just wait and you wait and you wait. And so I submitted my application the very, very beginning of February and April 12th was the date that you just log into your computer system and it either says matched or not matched. So you just have to sit there for a few months while everyone else is figuring out what they're doing with their lives and they're like, oh, what are you doing next year? And you're like, I have no idea. Like until April 12th, I had no idea what I was doing with my life. So, or if I had a future in that sense. So there is that. That is the whole application process. Those are my tips on just the application before you decide to become a registered dietitian, everything. Also, I made a video about what I'm currently doing in my program, what classes I'm in currently, but since I am in an MSDI program, which is a master's and a dietetic internship, I am just really taking classes this first year and then I'll do mostly internships my second year with a few classes. So that is where I'm at. You can watch the video below, It'll, I'll link it below. It's about like what classes I'm in. Oh. But hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope this was helpful to some of you. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for this video. I'm sorry it took so long to get out. And I hope this gives you a little more insight as to what being a dietetic intern, being a dietetic undergrad, becoming a registered dietitian means. So until next time, click the thumbs up if this helped you, if you liked this video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.